Before I begin today's video, I should clarify that this isn't going to be one of those videos that just trashes on women in video games, and I'm not one of those guys that's a complete jerk to women as soon as they breathe into the mic. I respect women in video games and esports. Everything I'm going to be talking about is going to be based on scientific research and my own experience, so just keep that in mind as you watch this. Ever since tournaments like the Valorant Game Changers and ESL Impact rose in popularity, one question has always lingered in the comments of every video they post. Why aren't they in the main leagues if they're good enough? The simple answer I often see is that they're simply not good enough, which is sadly true to a certain extent, but the more important question is, why aren't they good enough? What is holding them back from competing with the best of the best? So I decided to look deeper into this topic and give my thoughts on it. None of my reasons are in any specific order, I just typed everything out on a script with whatever first came to mind. The first reason is demographics. The harsh reality is that not many women are interested in esports, but it's not entirely their fault. For the longest time, video Video games were seen as a young boys activity. Just ask any Gen X or Millennial and there's a good chance they'll tell you the same thing. Obviously that's not the case anymore. Ever since the gaming boom of the early 2000s, 40% of the gaming population have consisted of women. While that's a great number, what's more important are the games women are attracted to. Research has shown that women are more interested in genres that are more casual like RPGs, MMOs, and story driven games while being less interested in competitive games like sports games, MOBAs, and shooters. Hmm, I wonder what genres esports consist of. Women are already a very small minority in these esports. Asking them to join the top 1% in the world is asking a lot, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Events like the ESL Impact and the Valorant Game Changers just happened, and it showed that there are plenty of women willing to do whatever it takes to be the best they could possibly be in these esports. There are also women working behind the scenes of these esports, such as casters, analysts, and production, which are jobs often underestimated in esports. Something that I've also noticed is that women are often more interested in more colorful fantasy games with diverse characters with a backstory than gloomy realistic looking games and I'm sure you've noticed this too. During my thousands of hours of playing CSGO I would only bump into a woman once every two months if I were lucky. Ever since I started putting more time into Valorant I bump into at least one woman every other match so if you want to meet more women in the gaming scene Hint, hint. The second reason could be how women are treated in the scene. It's no secret that women are more prone to toxicity in video games. Unlike the real world, video games keeps their users anonymous. If you trash talked against a woman that didn't deserve it in public, you'd get canceled overnight. Do the same thing in video games, you're pretty much scot-free. Thanks to the internet keeping their users anonymous, fatherless teenagers with an IQ less than 50 can tell women to go make a sandwich and sabotage their gameplay without any impactful punishment whatsoever. Some companies are trying to combat this by recording voice chat, but these have gained controversy since some would consider this to be a breach of privacy. I made a whole video on this topic if you want my thoughts and a more detailed explanation on it. And just like that video, I know what half of you are about to comment. Block, kick, mute, leave game. Simple, right? Not really. People that usually say this as a solution often don't understand how impactful communication and teamwork is in esports games. In a game like Valorant, blocking and kicking simply isn't an option, which, please Riot, make those an option. Muting your teammates or refusing to talk to them puts you at a competitive disadvantage since you can't give or receive important callouts. Currently, there isn't a punishment for team killing your teammates, so they're gonna keep doing it for as long as they want. And you can't leave or else you'll be the one punished by losing ranked points and getting an XP penalty along with the cooldown the next time you queue up. So you're basically stuck in this 1v9 situation anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. So how does this affect the esports side of things? Let's say I'm a new player in Valorant and I was recently inspired to grind ranked because I watched Sentinels win Masters. They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't. I can jump into a competitive match, get teammates with some good comms going, and have a decent experience right off the bat. But let's say my non-existent girlfriend wants to give to try. They got a PC, downloaded Valorant, and saw G2 finally win something. Now they want to grind ranked. Unfortunately, since women are more prone to toxic experiences, there's a good chance their first experience is going to include throwers and sexist teammates, especially if they start in the lower ranks, which is how most players start out. Even if that isn't their first experience, they're going to experience it way more than men do. It's not the idea of toxicity that turns women off from esports, as everyone is bound to experience it 
it at least a handful of times in their life, it's the consistency of it. Being stuck in this situation constantly without any reassurance will drain your soul. And if that's going to be their experience for most of their time within the game, their inspiration for wanting to go pro is going to go down the drain and they're going to go back to whatever they were doing before. I would go more into scientific stuff, such as whether or not men or women have an advantage over one another in esports, physically or mentally, but the more I thought about it and did my research, the more mixed results I got. So I'll leave that part to you guys to discuss. We also have to remember that esports is still a very new concept very early in its infancy. If there truly is something physical or mental that holds women back from competing with the top 1% of men in the gaming scene, we won't know about it for another decade or two simply because we don't have enough information. But what I can say for now is that what we've done so far to help women feel included and accepted in the esports scene is showing great results. The Valorant Game Changers ended up becoming the most viewed women's esport of all time, showing game developers, potential sponsors, and investors that there's a demand for women's esports with a community willing to back it up. And the women's scene for Counter-Strike is starting to make a comeback with ESL starting ESL Impact last year. For now, all we could do is support these leagues if you actually care about them and see how the future pans out. That is going to be it for today's video. What are your guys' thoughts on everything I just talked about? Leave them down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll talk to you all later.